Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial for introduction and basics of Vericut Composite Programming. Uh, VCP or Vericut Composite Programming, so I'm going to refer to it as VCP, is a very powerful composite programming uh, software. So looking into uh, the outline, we're going to have first an introduction where we're going to explain the workflow logic and how we name things as well as the major functions. And then we're going to have a basic laminate creation where we are going to do our first exercise um, together. It's important to highlight that whenever you see the sign, this means that this slide is for information and you don't need to be clicking anything. So we are using the software, so VCP, the Vericut Composite Programming Software, we are using it to program an AFP machine. This is an example of an AFP machine. It is the Integrated Structural Assembly for Advanced Composites at NASA Langley, Isaac. And this is an AFP machine. You have six degrees of freedom. You have a seventh degree with the rail. And in here you have a rotator. That's number eight. Or you can be laying up on the table. What we're going to do is we're going to use stacking sequences to create laminas. And one lamina on top of the other is going to help us to create our laminate and this is our composite part that we are looking for so let's understand the logic of the program layout the basic functions and so on first of all everything is highlighted in a tree so what we do is we create something called a model tree and in that model tree you create your profile you put your geometry you put sequences and this is where you put your plies. So for example, this is a eight ply composite. So you can see in here, we have a 45 followed by a 90 by a negative 45, zero, and so on. So the model tree shows the steps that are nested within each stage of the design. We talk about nodes, so in the model tree, every level is a node and you can right click on the node and add the stuff. And from that you branch off. So for example, this is a node, you branch off profiles, then you have nodes and so on. The profile is where you keep an index of all the main parameters involved in creating a uh, laminate. We are going to see that. As a reminder, whenever you see this sign on the slide, this means that this is presented for information. We talk about sequence and process. The sequence is when we are defining a set of plies with a specified set of angles. So in here, every sequence is of one ply, but you can have a sequence of several plies. A process, it describes an object branching off from the sequence, such as a node. So we're going to be creating a profile, adding a sequence, adding a process, and so on. This is the logic behind it. This is what we have. Our composite is a laminate. It is several plies that are going to be based on a surface geometry, and then it's going to be split into sequences, and each sequence will have processes where we would have the ply. So for an example, a sequence should not branch off directly from the laminate wide nodes and a process should not branch off from a surface. So for example, a process doesn't branch off from the surface node. However, it branches off from the sequence. Sometimes a profile can be both laminate level and surface level. So this is on the next slide. So we're going to see the layout and it will show the important functions. Let's highlight the software and move on to the next slide. So what you can see in front of you and you're looking at um, the live software. Um, so what you can see in here is this is how the software looks like. You have the different elements in here. So you have file, you set up, generate. So all of these different things. And here it is when you open a new program and uh, we're going to be doing that together. So, so the main toolbar and let's highlight the actual software. So now you're seeing the software and on the slide, first of all, you see the main toolbar. This is the main toolbar. This is where you have everything such as you open a file, you close a file, 
you start a laminate, you close a laminate, and all of these different elements. Then you have the laminate manager. So once you start with a new laminate, uh, this is where you have all these functions, the profile manager, and this is where you can play around with the model tree and so on. So now in the view toolbar and looking at the software here, this is where you have the view toolbar in here. This is where you change orientations, you look into the structure, you look into thickness. These are the tabs at the top. These are the different tabs. So that help you navigate different uh, elements. And then you have also the settings um, uh, view toolbar. So this is where you can toggle views and we're, we're gonna be seeing that this is the settings of view toolbar and we're going to be seeing that as we toggle within uh, inside of um, our trees. All right, cool. So this is what we're going to do. This is the exercise we're going to do together. We're going to create a uh, composite part having the following sequence. We're going to define the thickness. Uh, we're going to define the boundary. We're going to come up with a starting point. We're going to set certain parameters or like the toe widths, material thickness, all of these things are things you can change down the road and we will explain them as we progress. And we're gonna generate the tool. So let's go ahead and get started. This slide shows a quick guide of the process that you will always have to do. You'll always have to import a CAD surface for a new laminate, generate the thickness. You will add surface level profiles, you will create applies, you will define profiles, you can copy them around and so on. You will activate and input course parameters. You will test, generate a full course, set active process, create links, so how you come to the part and how you leave, and save the active process for the links. All right, so let's go ahead and start doing the tutorial together. I'm going to highlight the software and you have access to the slides as well. So first of all, we're going to click on a new laminate. So this is the new laminate creation. We're going to type into the laminate name flat plate one, and I'm going to create the folder on my uh, desktop. We're gonna make the project unit in inches, and then I'm gonna import the CAD model. So this is my part, and it is provided to you in the links in the tutorial. And I'm going to go ahead and press create. So this is where it shows me it's the surface was uh, successful. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Then the first thing you want to do is activate the surface and you can start uh, rotating it around. So something important to highlight is in preferences in here, uh, you can click on the mouse and activate different styles. So if you're used to Katia, if you're used to Creo, you can, let's say you're used to Katia, um, you can activate uh, the Katia style that you want for uh, your part. If you're used to, you know, the CG Tech model and so on. So I don't know what I pressed, but it's okay. So let's go back to CG Tech style. And so in here, there is this view toolbar. It is, you can actually play around with this toolbar. I think I was like very, very closely zoomed. So this is a toolbar and you can, so if you press the left button, you can rotate your part and it will rotate based on the point that you've pressed. If you press your right button, you can pan around it. And if you press your, uh, the wheel of the mouse, it can scroll, zoom in and uh, zoom out. All right, cool. So uh, I don't know if we pressed everything we needed to press. So let's make sure that um, we didn't generate the thickness model. So we can go back to So I'm just going to delete it all, close this one and remove file from list flat plate one browse select folder browse
of the CAD model and create. All right, so I'm doing this just to make sure that we, um, so it is flat plate too. Uh, I'm, I'm making this just to make sure that we're following the tutorial the same way with the same step so that I don't miss any step that is there. So once you click on this, actually what you need to do is uh, generate the thickness model. So in here you click out, if I click I, it shows where are the, um, the, the, the arrows to which model and they are positioned correctly. And uh, now after that, you can see the reference Z is along the same orientation. So this is totally, uh, we are totally fine. And then we click generate thickness model. And in here it is proposed to be 0 0.5 inches. And we go ahead, yes. And, and basically in here, uh, we are all good. So if we go back in here, this is where we have our thickness model. And you can see the part itself when you can reactivate and, and so on. And this is something where we're gonna be playing around with profiles and all of these uh, different elements. All right, cool. So now it's time to define the parameters. This is, so if I go back into uh, this chart, so this is step three, we want to add a surface level profile to define the parameters. So right click, I already activated because I double clicked on it. So once you double click on something, if you double click on something, it will be the active one. So this is the only one that I have in here. Um, so it is activated and uh, the model should appear as dark gray solid form. So right click on profile, click a new profile. And this is where we're gonna create a new profile uh, for us. So let's make sure that you have access to the software. So we're gonna call it laminate settings. For all of our laminate, we're gonna leave everything else the same and we're going to go ahead and click OK. So once we do that, once we have our laminate setting, we are going to enter the laminate manager. This is the icon for the laminate manager here. You press on this one. This is the icon of the laminate manager. And within the laminate manager, so let's go to this slide in here, uh, we're gonna set the view on courses and this is what we have. So this is where we're setting the, so if we need to change, you just click on the view and you can change to whatever else is needed. We're gonna keep it on uh, the courses. And so for this tutorial, we're only using surface level profiled. And sometimes when you have different conditions for different set of plies, you can create like different elements. So you can create two profiles, like let's say an example, plies one to five have a profile, plies six, seven have another one. You can create that and uh, you can come up to this. So to change any parameter, it is very simple, you double click. So let's say I wanted to change something, I just double click to change it, whatever it is. All right, going back to the software, uh, we're going to deactivate something within preferences, which is to automatically show a process card when creating a new process. This is just to avoid uh, a lot of repetitive uh, steps. So once we've done that, uh, we're going to go to the profile in here and add a sequence. And we're going to call this sequence, sequence 001. I'm going to copy this so that I don't have to type it a lot. So we have sequence one and we have our model in here. So, so this is we're gonna name. So we're gonna be naming sequence one, ply one, sequence two, ply two. I mean, naming conventions differ from one industry to the other and we will let you decide whatever works for you best. And within every sequence, we're gonna add a process. And in here, we're gonna name the process. We're going to name the process ply one. And we click OK. So, and then we're going to repeat the process several times. So we're going to right click at sequence two, 
at sequence three and we're gonna now add the fly So I am doing now a lot of repetitive steps. And that's good because this will help you. Well, I, I named this all right, cool. So now that we have all of these sequence and we've nested them the right way, what we're going to do is we're going to open that view uh, manager in the courses and we are in, in uh, ply one. I'm going to activate ply one and um, where we see the angle and we're going to start to put the angles, the right angle. So this is a 45 and we're going to continue this for all our laminates. So this is a 90, this is a negative. 45 this is a 0 this is a 45 oops you have to double click 45 90 and a negative 45 and a 0 in the end so now we have all of these plies listed right uh, what we're going to do is so looking into uh, the chart, we're going to go into laminate settings and we are going to make sure that we associate the right boundary for every part. And we're going to select boundary next to the name and we're going to, so let's go ahead and do that. So within laminate settings, we're going to next to boundaries. And we're going to select boundaries. We're going to activate this one again here. So we have one entity selected. Uh, when we apply this profile to the other plies, they will automatically have that boundary. So what we mean by that is instead of us going here and clicking one by one, we're going to copy that profile and apply it to uh, all the others. So instead of like going here and selecting like boundary and so on. We're just gonna copy that profile and apply it on all the others and it will take that uh, boundary. So going back into the charts, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go into um, our profile manager and we're going to copy this. Um, so this shows everything. We're going to copy the laminate settings here. So control copy and we're gonna paste it here. So what happens here is, it's like object-oriented programming. Let's make sure that you see the software. And once you have, once you have change in here, you can change the boundary, it will change everywhere to all of them. So now that we finish this copy-paste stage, also we can actually, uh, that's very important to highlight, you can select all of them and right click and click replace and change whatever uh, you want from uh, here as well. All right, cool. So these are different elements. And the next thing is we're going to repeat the same action to copy the base surface uh, settings here. So we're going to do that. All right, awesome. So now we're going to go back and we're going to remove this and we're going to activate our ply one. So I'm going to click here and activate ply one. So you can see the boundary got activated. If these little yellow arrow bothers you, you can deactivate them from here. I mean, it's really 
it, it's really what uh, what it is. And then we're gonna go to the generate tab. So this is where we're going to start uh, playing around with things. We're gonna click on uh, starting um, a new point for users and we're gonna select the mouse and you can go ahead and click where you want that part. So we can select this one here. So, and you can see they're saying the starting point is approximately somewhere in here. Watch out that your starting port is within the boundary and is not outside the boundary. If it is outside the boundary, this slide shows you, if you select your point outside the boundary, it's gonna create it outside of your boundary. So make sure that your starting point is somewhere around inside the boundary. So this is very close to our coordinate system and uh, we want to make sure that the ply is the right one that is selected. And once you do that, actually you have these arrows in here and these arrows can create for you the uh, composite. So you can see in here, like it created a first course and you can click another one for another one or you can uh, click on this one many more it will keep on doing it for all the others So this is very important. This is based on our setting. It is creating our 45 degrees angle and um, We can see the different uh, Element of the plies so you can see each course on its own um, And so on so this is very 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 important so you can click, so once this is done and we have created all of these different elements, you can click on update thickness and you say, yes, I wanna update the thickness for ply one. This is important so that uh, when you go to the next level, it has the thickness that is accounted for it. So now we can go back, we've created ply one and in the laminate manager, uh, now there is like a little um, like asterisk that you have this means that this process is still active, but it is not yet saved. So to save it, we're gonna click on save active process. And like this, we save this active process. Like this, we are, we are, sure, that, um, we are sure that this is uh, going to happen. So now this brings us back to the tutorial. I mean, this is the fundamentals that we've covered. Now what we want to do is after we save the active process, um, we can uh, generate the full courses for the others if we want to, but before doing that, we're going to slightly modify uh, the laminate uh, uh, settings profile. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna go to laminate settings and we're gonna go click to the table view of the laminate settings. And then in here, the starting point, we're going to change that to um, zero zero and zero and so we can have any values that we want so what is suggested is four four zero and enter so what happens these settings will be applied to all the okay so actually i did them uh, and i did them on apply one so this is good when you do things live um, I did them on ply one and my intentions was to do them in here on the laminate settings. So let's go back. Let's remove this, go back to here and, um, so we generated this, we go to generate in here. I'm going to click on the starting point, click somewhere else and generate it all again. So just for the sake of redoing the exercise the way that we are intending to do it, to show you the difference. So in here, this point is selected here. Instead of going for every ply and selecting the point. So now that this is done, um, what we want to do is uh, go back, no update thickness, update the thickness, go back, save active process, it's saved. And we're gonna come back here. And then what we want to do is come here and put the points four, four, and zero. And by doing so, look at how all of these values automatically changed to 
4, 4, and 0. Like this, we don't have to uh, define it. We don't need to change the starting pores. All we have to do is do the course generation. So let's do that. Let's go ahead. Let's see if this was asked to me. Uh, repeat the course. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to uh, go to press, press step two and we click on the generate tab and we don't have to change anything here. All we have to do is create the process. So this is good because in here you're seeing the 90 degrees. So the 90 degrees being created and we're good when it comes to that. You can come back here. You can come to this one. Yes, we want to save it. And you can come to this one, generate, and you can generate the 45. So you can see in here, every angle is being generated based on the angles. As we move on in the future tutorials, each one of these angles and what they mean, uh, we will be talking about them uh, more. So you do that for all the subsequent steps. Make sure that you um, activate the process. Now, the other thing that is very, very important to highlight in this first introduction is the links. So let's take a look into, uh, let's take a look into the links into Ply4. So if you come to Ply4 and you're generating, obviously you create all of these elements. Don't forget to update the thickness. I mean, I'm just demonstrating the tool and we're just creating different element. Make it a habit that you update the thickness every time. Actually, in one of the advanced tutorials, we will show you how you can create all of these things in like a batch manager process. Uh, so the other thing that's very, very important is links. It is creating how you want the part to come. You want it bi-directional. You want the machine to come through one direction and do the manufacturing or you want it to be uh, bi-directional. So there is a lot of information relevant on um, the part. So for example, if you want this one, unidirectional versus bidirectional, this is how your part come and do one course, then go back and do the second one. This is unidirectional. Bidirectional, the part will come and do the course, will move, will come down and do another course from the other side, will come up, go back and come down and do the other course from the other side. So, and you can see the links, like, I mean, you can define how you want the links to be and define the clearance and define all of these different um, elements. So for this tutorial, we are not going to be changing these parameters, but we will be doing that in the future. Of course, all the time you want to do update the thickness once uh, this is generated. So, I mean, let's go back to the tutorial here. And we're gonna have to save the active process, go to, uh, to uh, apply five, and, and we're going to create all of this. So what did we miss here? Courses, starting point. So we have all of these things. So now we're creating a 45 degree again. So as it's rolling, we're going to update the thickness and we can actually so this is update. So this is the part. We update the thickness and then we create on links. And now we're going to create the links. So it shows you how the part is going to start, do, go back and do another course. Look at if we put it unidirectional. Look at how these different elements will be changed. So unidirectional, it's going and coming back and doing the same part ever again. All right, going back to here, there are so many parameters that are related to the tool setup that we need to take care of. And all of these parameters will be coming subsequently in future tutorials. So how we can change the tool settings, how we can uh, modify the material widths and all of these. So you can go to setup in here just to show you a little bit. You can come in here and define your material. You can say it's a quarter inch toe. You can say it is whatever value it is that you want. You can put the material thickness, tolerances, the roller. You can put the roller compression. If you have a segmented roller, which means different pieces of the roller. In here, the head, you can say my AFP machine can do 32. 
Um, the minimum length is four inches per toe on, by default on most machines. These are parameters that uh, they differ and as we're progressing beyond this introduction, you will be able to understand these different elements. And you can change these tool settings relevant to each one of those. So you can actually define them and have them uh, prepared. So this is an example. You can have one toe per head. Uh, it's a single toe of three inches and with a certain material thickness. Or another example, this is 16 toes per head and each toe is like a quarter inch and the material thickness. And you can see in here, so you can see in this location, each one of these tool settings, how it creates. But this is machine dependent. This is machine uh, uh, relevant. All right, awesome. So, so, so one last thing before we wrap up the tutorial for this round, and this is an introduction, this is the basics. One very last minor thing is uh, toe coverage, and you can have different settings. You can have, if you do non settings, half settings, or full settings. What does this mean? If you have an edge and you're doing a 45 degree, you can either touch it. So, so this would be here. So you can see in here, let's erase all of this and make sure you see the slides. Let's say you have all of this and you can only touch it or you can have half settings, which means it's going, it's passing by the middle point of your edges. Or if you can have full settings, which means you are covering the toe completely like the excess material is all from the other side. This is important based on how you want your coverage and so on. All right, so with that, I hope this was a good first introduction to VCP. I'm looking forward to keep on building the set of knowledge with you in the upcoming tutorials. Thank you so much.